So here's my palette all set up and ready to go. And yours will probably look very similar. You might have different colors, but what is the same is that you should have very little dye in each of these. I use one, two drops, three drops, not much. You can always add more. But with this silk painting dye, it actually dries out really quickly. So if you put too much, you end up wasting it. Um, and there's no need for that. So let's just be conservative and just put in what you need. And you'll see that the color goes a long way. This is all that you actually need. The other thing I like to do with my palette is I like to leave some room so that I could mix some of the colors. Let's talk a little bit about color theory. And I don't mean to scare you by using this terminology. It's just the idea of what happens when you mix colors together. Very basic, you don't have to worry about it, but it's always nice to be reminded and just have it in the back of your mind when you're painting. First part is when you mix different colors. If you mix one color with another color, together you create a new color. So if you wanted to make purple, for example, you mix a little bit of red, you mix a little bit of blue, and voila, you have purple. What are some other color combinations can you think of? How about when you mix yellow and blue, what color do you get? Yes, you get green. And if you mix red and yellow, you get orange. So just a good reminder of what that's all about. So all right, let's get started. Finally, we have everything set up. We have the colors in our palette. We have our paint brushes. We have our water for rinsing out the brushes. Let's see what happens when you put some of this dye onto the silk. It's really fun and I'll show you why. Because as soon as you put just a little drop right onto the silk, look at how it starts to blend and move. Okay, so as you started to see how the colors really blend together and the colors spreads, that is the joy and the difference of using silk painting compared to other kinds of painting. And that's something to remember because you probably used acrylic where you use the paintbrush and you actually put strokes of color. Here, what you're trying to do is actually guide that little drop of color to wherever you want it to go. And then the Gouda outline is what keeps the color from going any further. So it stays within the area that you paint. And what I recommend is to put the color starting in the middle of the area and then push the color outwards to the edges. So what do I mean by that? Let's take a look. I'll just drop a little bit of the color in the middle. I'll add another color and just drop it right next to it. And then I use the brush to push into the corner. Now, something very important to remember, I mean, it doesn't matter if it doesn't quite work out the way you want, but you don't need much on your brush. In fact, if you put too much dye on your brush, it will spread past the line. So you wanna use just a little bit and you can use it to push the color around. That's it, you're painting. That's silk painting. And I tell you what, it's very addictive. Now I just rinsed out my brush. You don't have to rinse out your brush very often. I do it whenever I'm changing um, very different colors. Like I had yellow on my brush, then I wanted to go to blue, and now I wanna go back to a different color. So that's when you'll paint, um, you'll wash your brush. However, I find it more interesting to leave different colors on my brush. So I don't actually wash my brush very often. And when I say leave the colors on the brush, here's what happens. So if I start painting with this color, and I put a little bit here, and then I go right into this other color, and then I go right into this other color. All the different colors on my brush start to appear, and so it starts blending on its own. And you can have a whole lot of fun with that. And I can do this forever, but I want you guys to try, see what happens. And you don't need much paintbrush, or paint rather, on your brush and you're just moving the colors to where you want it to go. And take a look here, you see how that color spread past the line? That's because I had too much right on the very edge. So the idea is that you wanna have, start in the middle, control how much you have on your brush and just let it push to the edge. So you're not painting right next to the, um, the line. There we go. 
I made some purple. Why not put a little purple in there? Now, my other bit of advice is to be bold with the color combinations. So, you know, this one's really nice when you have different blues together, but it's also really fun when you have green and orange next to each other. So don't think too much, just sort of have fun with the colors that you're working with. And look, you'll see here, I went over the line. That's okay, that's part of the process. Oh, and you're probably wondering why I mentioned the paper towel. I use the paper towel if I have too much on my brush. I put some of it on the paper towel and then I put it onto the fabric. Also, if I want to see what the color looks like after I mixed it, say this purple, remember when I put the red and the blue together and I made purple, you can put it on the paper towel and that will give you an idea of what the color would look like when you put it onto the silk. I have too much on the brush, so I'm gonna actually put some of it on the paper towel and then I'll put it down on the silk. And there it is, we're painting. So have fun with it. All right, so here we've been painting the smaller areas and that's when you use the smaller brushes and what's nice about small areas is that you can do one area at a time, take a break, shake your hands out a little bit, come back and do another area at a time. So what you can do for the big areas is you can wet the silk with clean water and that will give you more time to blend the colors together and work with the dye before it dries too quickly. Okay, so this is what it would look like. I have a nice clean brush, I have clean water, and I'm just going to put the brush onto the silk it's probably hard for you to see on the um, camera, but it actually changes color a little bit so you can see you can see where it's um, wet. Now here's another technique for the bigger areas. If you wanna get a look of water, here's a little trick. Using one of the bigger brushes and just paint an area. And then you're gonna do another area right next to it, but you want to leave a little bit of space in between and then let's have some fun. Let's actually mix some of the colors together. You just do a little drop like that, a little drop like that. Let's do another little area here. 